start our tomatoes early. We're going to deliver tomatoes to your parents before they deliver them to ours. <laughs> What time is it getting to be? Ten past five. Any thoughts about dinner? Mm, not really. You? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care. You want to go out? I thought we were trying to save money. Okay, then let's stay in. <laughs> What's to eat? Good question. <laughs> Anything happening in the fridge these days? I have no idea. <laughs> Care to take any guesses? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Harold. 
rat shit. sell this place and go to Mexico. For dinner? <laughs> Not for dinner. For forever. Forever's a long time, Harold. Well, yeah, it's forever. I think you've been out in the sun for way too long. Why don't you sit down and have another glass of water? No, Meredith, I'm serious. I know you are, hon. No, no, I'm really serious. I think we should sell this place and go live down in Mexico. Okay. You are serious. You want us to go and live in Mexico? Yes. Forever? Yes. And our jobs? We can quit them. Just up and quit them. Like so long, it's been good to know ya. All right, we can give them 30 days. And then live how? You mean for money? Yes, the stuff we spend every day. Okay, I've got this worked out. We can sell this place and buy a place down in Mexico. And with the money left over from the sale of this place, we can live down there and live well without working until Social Security kicks in. Social Security? That is 10 years away, Harold, assuming there is any such thing when we get there. It's okay, we can make it. I've already run the numbers. We can get $250,000 for this place tomorrow. And how do you know that? Jimbo. You've been talking to Jimbo was, Collins about selling our house? It was just talk. It was just casual talk oh, over God, a Oh, God, Carol. Listen, Jimbo says we can get two fifty dollars cash for this place. Get it tomorrow if we want. Two fifty. dollars for only 25,000, we can get a place down in Mexico. A nice place, a nice place down on the water. A place like Ben and Johnny got. Own it outright. Are you following this? Do I have a choice? Okay, that leaves $225,000, got that? Go on, Harry. Okay, you take 225,000, you divide it by 10, the number of years we have until Social Security, and you get 22,000. $500 a year. Got that? $22,500 a year. Now that may not sound like much to live on here, Meredith, but down there? Oh, down there we can live like kings. I mean, we can have servants. Now, Bev and Johnny have servants, people to clean up, people to cook. If you're hungry, you say, I'm hungry. All of a sudden there's a meal. I say we do it. Just sell it all and head south. To hell with this place and everybody in it. Harold, what has gotten into you? This is our home. Well, at the moment. Look, honey, I like Mexico too, and I can see us spending some time there. Maybe even a couple months or a winter, but something longer than a short two week vacation, but not forever. In the end, I'm going to want to be coming home. But if we lived down there, Meredith, we'd be home already. Oh. I mean, home is where you live. You've had lots of homes, the homes you grew up in, the, the homes we've lived in before we lived here. This just happens to be our home at the moment. Just for today, but just for today. What about the kids? What about them? This is their home too? Not anymore. They've moved out into the world. They have homes of their own. This is their real home, the home they can come back to. Come back to? When? Maybe you've been spending too much time in the sun. Come back to if they need to come home, Harold. If their homes out there don't work out. Oh, please, Meredith. If their homes out there don't work out, as you say, this is the last place they would come to. I don't see nary a Starbucks out there, do you? <laughs> they will come to appreciate this someday. Well, yeah, like when we're dead so they can sell it. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous? They come here, what, at most once a year, and, and then only reluctantly. They're never going to come back here and live. That doesn't mean that they're waiting for us to die so they can sell the place. So you, you make it sound like they've been talking about it. Well, of course they've been talking about it. When they talk, that's probably all they talk about. 
that what you and your sister talked about when your mother was dying, selling the house? Yes, but she was dying. And we're not? Not like she was. I don't see how it's that much different. We're just dying in slow motion. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say, Carol. Well, it's true. You're in denial. The clock is ticking. We're rounding third base. I mean, how much longer do you expect to live? Long enough to be put in one of those respite care homes? Oh, I am never going into one of those goddamn places. Well, now that's what your mother said, isn't it? And isn't that where she ended up? Look, the day I'm gone, the kids are going to be up to move you out. Well, I won't leave. Well, you can't run this place by yourself. If I need help, I'll get help. If you're going to stay here without me, you're going to need an old man. <laughs> somebody to do the things that I do. Somebody to keep the kids at bay, keep them from moving you one into one of those smelly old people's homes or making you sign papers you don't understand. No one's going to want to move in with me, Harold. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> it's good nookie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave a note to that effect. Oh, would you stop it? <laughs> oh, there's going to be guys sniffing around here ten minutes after I'm gone. But look, we're getting off the point. Which is? Mexico. Are we still on that, Harold? I thought we'd moved on to talk about dying. Oh, we were talking about dinner, and that got us on to Mexico. Hey, look. <laughs> Harold, I don't want to leave my friends, OK? You wouldn't be leaving anybody. You've got email down there. That is not the same thing as seeing real people. Well, that's all you do with your friends now is email them or text them. That is not true. Look, Meredith, you had friends when you were growing up, and, and you don't know those people anymore, so what's wrong with letting go of the friends you have here and making new ones down in Mexico? I don't speak Spanish. How about that? Might be fun to learn. <laughs> For you, maybe, Harold. Look, if you want to dump your friends, that's fine, but I am not going to dump mine. Well, it's not about dumping anybody. It's just about moving on. <laughs> Listen, Meredith, wherever you go, you're going to have friends. <laughs> Besides, if we had a place down in Mexico, a nice place down by the water, the kids would be down there all the time. We'd have more people visiting us there than we do here, and real people, not cyber people. <laughs> I mean, everybody wants to go to Mexico in the winter, and they're always looking for places to stay, cheap places, and what could be cheaper than our place? <laughs> We'd have so many people visiting us down there, that they'd be, we'd be kicking them out and sending them back to this godforsaken icebox. <laughs> just, just think about it. We've had kids, and the kids have moved out. We don't just have to keep doing the same thing. We can do something else. Are you done? I guess for the moment. Good, because you don't seem to be hearing me, Harold. I'm not going to have any part of selling our home and moving down to Mexico. Well, now give me one good reason. Because I don't want to die down there. How about I, that? Well, who said anything about dying? Well, isn't that what happens at the end of forever? Well, it's going to happen someday. And were you just? Saying that we're all dying in slow motion? Yes. Right. And when it happens, I don't want it to happen down there. Well, where would you like it to happen? Right here. In this room? Well, it doesn't have to be in this room, Harold. I just don't want it to happen in some shack down in Mexico. We are not talking about a shack, Meredith. <laughs> Dad and Johnny are not living in a shack down there. And besides, after you die, you're not going to care where you die. I just don't want to die from shotgun in Mexico, Harold. It's as simple as that. And I certainly don't want to be buried down oh, there. Oh, buried. Now we're burying people. <laughs> Isn't that what happens after you die? Meredith, <laughs> you can be buried wherever you'd like to be buried. It doesn't matter where you die. 
die. If you want to be buried in Spruce Glen, you can be buried in Spruce Glen. And how is that going to happen if I die in some shotgun in Mexico? Well, I will just pick your body up and hike it up here and plant you in Spruce Glen. How's that? And what if you die first? What then? Oh, if I die first, just cremate me and throw my ashes in the ocean or toss me in the jungle and let the birds pick me apart. Not you, Harold. Me. Me what? What happens with my body when I die if you die first? Huh? What happens with my body when I die I if you die first? I got it. I don't know. Just fix it up with the kids and they can bring you back up here and plant you in Spruce Glen. Kids? <laughs> they will just leave me down there to rot. <laughs> you might be right about that one. die first, you sell the place down in Mexico, you come back up here, oh, you oh. die here, and you get buried in Spruce Glen. How's that? Are you happy now? And if I come back here, where would I live? If we sell this place, I don't have a home to come back to. Well, you could rent a place. Well, you could rent a place right next door to Spruce Glen. And then when, all they, when you die, all they have to do is push you out the window. If we sell this place, Harold, and buy a place down in Mexico and then spend the remainder of the money living down there, how am I ever going to afford to rent a place down here, even if Social Security kicks in? From the money that you get from selling the place down oh, there. Oh, if we can sell the place, Harold, and that is a big if. Mexico. You heard what happened to Teddy and Sarah. Oh, they Teddy went down there Sarah. and they lost everything, Harold. Every penny. And now they're living on food stamps. You know, you know what? What? Sometimes you are just impossible. And you're not? So you're just saying, we're, this is it. It? <laughs> the end of the line. What line is that, Harold? The line that goes all the way back to the beginning. You are not making any sense. Is this the last stop in the line, Meredith? That's what I'm asking. It's a simple question. Is this the last stop? Everybody out. You have arrived at Foreverville. <coughs> it's always a last stop, I suppose. And you're saying this is it. No. All I'm saying is I don't want to sell our house and go die in some shack in Mexico. Oh, well, you are no fun at all. No. No sense of adventure. Oh, I've had adventure enough for a lifetime, Harold. Oh. Starting fires in the morning with wet wood is a real adventure. <laughs> Getting up our driveway in the Toyota after three days of rain is an adventure and a half. Getting that hot water heater to work <laughs> right now, there's a real adventure. It's been nothing but adventures, Harold. One back to the land adventure after another, and I don't need to go anywhere else to get any more adventures. So you're saying we're just going to stay here, <laughs> hang out forever? Sounds good to me. <laughs> And so to fortify us for the journey, how about we go out and get something to eat? I'm not hungry. Oh, I see. Poor old Harold is unhappy. He and Jimbo Collins cooked up some harebrained scheme about selling our house and moving down to Mexico and bad old Meredith dumped on it. Is that it, sweetie pie? Did bad old Meredith dump on Harold's Mexico scheme? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, here's what we can do about it. Are you ready for this, Harold? We can go down to that 
Mexican restaurant in the mall. <laughs> the Acapulco, now there's an adventure I can get into, Harold. Those tacos, those enchiladas, those big margaritas with the umbrellas on top, the mariachi music. Come on, the full Mexican experience, Harold. We don't have to sell our home when we can get down on some chili rellenos right here, right now. just love rubbing it in, don't you? <laughs> I do. And you know why? I don't think I want to know why. Because you deserve it, Harold. <laughs> Selling our house. What were you thinking? I don't know why I married you. <laughs> yes. I think I was thinking clearly. <laughs> and you think I was? Well, I don't think I was thinking at all. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Well, you can say yes to one of those, those big margaritas, I uh, guess. Yes. I just need to know one thing. What's that? What? <laughs> Who are Harold? Do I get a kiss? Well, do you deserve one? <laughs> well, I guess that's for you to decide. Oh, come here. Does that answer your question? I guess it does. <laughs> what do you, Harold? What do you, Harold? Where are you taking me? Just Bruce Glenn. No! 